Welcome to this week's Degrees of Science. Methane emissions is something that gets talked a lot about when you talk about greenhouse gases. So today we're going to introduce you to a very interesting global initiative that's working to reduce methane emissions from cattle, but they're doing it by learning about variations in kind of how animals, or particularly cattle, digest food. So we're talking today with Dr. Matt Spangler. He's a animal science professor at the University of Nebraska and leading a team of researchers uh, there at the University of Nebraska in this initiative. So Dr. Spangler, I guess off the top, why is it important to reduce methane emissions? I, I would say two reasons. One, the global consumer has has voiced uh, their their concerns over enteric methane emissions from ruminant animals. And of course, we're uh, focused on beef cattle here in, in this project. The thing that I think gets overlooked is the economic impact that could have to beef cattle producers. Most people would think about the potential to either leverage niche markets or perhaps to, to leverage carbon credits should those become available. But I tell people the other benefit is, is that enteric methane is really an energetic loss. So when animals emit methane, that is energy, if you will, that could have been used to put on weight. And so a focus on methane emission is really another way to look at the efficiency of feed utilization. And that's where I think that uh, beef cattle producers would be keenly interested in this. So when you're talking kind of this natural release, are, are cattle really the, the big culprit when it comes to kind of naturally producing a lot of methane? I think that's a, an excellent question. And, and if, if, the, if the sole focus perhaps was on greenhouse gases, the question is, would we immediately target uh, ruminant animals, particularly ruminant animals uh, in a country like the U.S., which is extremely efficient at producing uh, red meat, producing beef cattle? Um, and, and I think the answer is that we might put emphasis elsewhere. But if we think about the opportunity to not only make an impact in reducing uh, methane emission, but also leverage the other benefits, which are ensuring that beef products are globally competitive and appealing to a global consumer base, and then also the emphasis on trying to improve the efficiency of feed utilization, I think there's logic in, in going down this path. So th this initiative, it's interesting. So you are looking at more kind of the uh, genetic side or how these different cattle may produce methane, right? That's exactly right. There's certainly evidence that uh, methane emissions from beef cattle or ruminants more generally, which should include dairy cattle and, and sheep, is moderately heritable. So to put that into context, average daily gain in beef cattle would also be something that's moderately heritable. So we've shown that we can implement genetic selection to change those things. So there's evidence that we can actually change the amount of methane that animals emit on a daily basis through genetic selection. And so that's uh, one of the reasons why there's an emphasis on genetics here. The other thing is, is we know that genetic change is cumulative and permanent. In other words, if we continually put selection pressure on reducing methane, we'll make incremental improvements over time. So your group at the University of Nebraska, what, what part of this initiative are you all really focusing on, in on? Well, it's an extremely large global effort. So to give you a sense, uh, the global methane hub has a global uh, genetics component to it. That component spans 25 countries and 50 uh, research institutions across those countries. So we're talking about efforts in Europe, in North and South America, in Africa, in Australia, and in New Zealand. And, and I think that's a really impressive part about this. All of those entities focused on dramatically increasing the number of individual animals that we have with methane data such that we can implement genetic selection programs, not only across countries, but within our respective countries. Uh, so producers have tools that they can use to select for decreased methane. So one of the things that we want to do outside of refining just how heritable methane emission is from beef cattle is also provide knowledge of how that's related to other traits that are economically relevant. So I mentioned weight gain before, you can think of feed intake, carcass attributes, and eventually uh, things related to the cow herd. Fertility uh, would be chief of mind because 
I think it would be inappropriate to release selection tools to the beef industry if we don't have awareness on how that may change things that impact um, the economic viability of their enterprise now. So that's going to be a large effort in understanding that. We're also utilizing what I'll call a genomics approach. So we're genotyping all of the animals that have uh, this methane data, which allows us to answer the question of, well, at a genomic level, what are the places in the genome that seem to be more responsible uh, for differences among animals for how much methane they emit? So are you looking, is it going to be like you think certain breeds may produce more, or is it just a genetic line or bloodline that could be producing more methane? I think the answer is yes to both. <laughs> so, so one of the things that we'll be able to do too is estimate the differences between breeds uh, for the amount of methane that they may produce on a daily basis, but then also within a breed have an understanding for how much uh, among sire or between animal variation there is. If I think about beef cattle producers implementing uh, breeding programs now, they need to contemplate both of those things. Which breeds do I use and then which animals within a breed I use? This trait will be no different. So you're mentioning the industry side. You know, a lot of times when you start talking reducing, reducing methane emissions, you're worried about uh, the cost on the producer or maybe reducing herd. Is this something that y'all could implement that really wouldn't cause any problems to the, the industry? Yeah, and, and, and that's chief of mind. Um, if I go back to the goal of trying to estimate the relationship between methane and all the traits that we know are economically impactful now, that helps us answer that question of, if there is uh, a desire to decrease methane, how much might I change the traits that either have a cost or a revenue associated with them for me now? Which gives us a sense then of, is it a financial gain or is there potentially a financial loss? If the latter, then, then what is the amount of money, if you will, that might need to be returned to the producer for decreasing methane in their herd? I think those are open questions and a project like this is gonna help shed some light uh, on those answers. So I know a lot of your research is on genetic side, but I know you're looking some at the biome kind of gut health. Is there potentially where you'd have to change feed or is that still following that genetic trait that could still help to achieve the goal on this? Yeah, so the, the microbiome, and think of the microorganisms, if we talk about ruminants, we're really focused on the microorganism population in their rumen, um, and that population does a lot of good things for the animal. It helps them make use of the feed that they eat, but we can manipulate, again, through genetic selection, what that microbiome looks like which there's plenty of evidence out there that says that microbiome is actually heritable itself. So the animal chooses, if you will, the microbiomes and the relative abundance that inhabit the rumen. So it provides another avenue through genetic selection to make animals perhaps emit less methane, but also improve the uh, feed efficiency. So looking kind of broad scale on this, how much of an impact do you think or hope that this uh, initiative will have when it comes to reducing the amount of methane production from cattle. Yeah, so obviously we, we hope it's impactful not only in terms of reducing uh, global em methane emissions from cattle, but it really the impact it has really depends on the uh, economic signal given to producers, which then determines how much emphasis they put on, on selecting for that in their breeding programs. So if there is clearly no economic incentive, either directly for methane or indirectly because of the benefits associated with feed efficiency, then I think it's, it's reasonable to expect that there won't be a lot of uh, direct genetic change. However, if there are economic benefits, either directly again for reducing methane or indirectly through improved feed efficiency, then I think we'll see a reduction uh, steadily over time. But I'd emphasize as, as a beef cattle geneticist and also somebody that, that grew up on a beef cattle operation, there are a lot of traits that impact the economic viability of an enterprise. And never uh, would I advocate that somebody go out and select solely for one thing. So this is going to be yet another tool in the toolbox um, for people to select for multiple traits simultaneously that, that impact um, the sustainability of their operation long term. So with you, you being the team leader here, how fun is it on your side 
you know, you're, you're putting together scientists in kind of different fields, but you're leading a lot of grad students working on a, a big international initiative. How, how fun is it on y'all's end? Well, I'm really glad you mentioned that. It, it is fun to be part of a global initiative and to work with colleagues uh, from across the world, all focused uh, on an objective. And earlier this morning, an example, we had a, a call relatively early my time uh, to talk about uh, data sharing principles, because that's another objective is we don't want to do this work in isolation. Uh, we want to openly share data across countries so that we can better leverage the individual funding that we have. Um, so it's there's always competition amongst research teams and again across scientists, but it's evident to me the objective here is to work together um, such that we can make faster progress. You, you mentioned graduate students. There's going to be heavy graduate student involvement in this research, and I think not only the opportunity to train students in uh, quantitative genetics and genomics and uh, metagenomics, so the microbiome, but do so exposing them not only to colleagues from across the world, but inherently production systems of beef cattle across the world. I think it's just awesome opportunity. Well, Dr. Spangler, I think it's a really init interesting initiative, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Well, I appreciate the invitation. Thank you.